So we are talking about uh, descriptive statistics, which was one branch of statistics. And in last lecture, we covered uh, measures of central tendency, uh, where the major function of descriptive statistics is to summarize the data, like presenting the data into one single value. And in last lecture, we covered mean, median, mod. Those were the measures of central tendency that how our tons of data can be described and summarized into one single value by describing them in an average score. Like in, you have seen that wherever we talk about mean, we also talk about standard deviation or variance. So we, we, we know that uh, mean is good and it gives a lot of information about the data, but we also want to know the variability or spread of scores in the data, that how the scores are spread out in the data rather than just a single central value of the data. So this function has been fulfilled by measures of dispersion or measures of variability. So what measures of variability tells you, they tell you about the uh, dispersion of scores in the data or spread of scores in the data. And these are equally important and required as measures of central tendency like mean. So we will look at a few examples and see how measures of dispersion are important. Here on this slide, you can see that I have put randomly four sets of data. And uh, as I told you in my previous lecture, that when data is symmetrical and that is smooth, usually the mean value and the median values are equal. Since you can see the data one, these are the scores of the five students on a test. And the scores are 48, 49, 50, 51, and 52. So the central value or the mean value, if somebody will ask me how students, you know, performed on the test, I'll report 50 is the mean or the average. Similarly, in data two, again, there are five students and their scores. And you can see that the scores are 40, 45, 50, 55, and 60. Since the data is symmetrical, you can see that the mean would be 50. The central value, the median and mean will be equal. So again, the mean is 50, and somebody asks me, you know, performance of students in this class, I'll say, oh, mean value is 50. And same as in data three. It's a 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, with the mean value of 50. And in the data four, you can see that the students who are scoring from zero to 100. So the scores of the five students are 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100, but still the mean is 50. If I'm telling somebody how students performed on the test, and I'm just saying in a single one value that the mean is 50, it's not enough maybe. I need to tell something about the spread of scores in the data or dispersion or variability of scores in the data. As you can see in these four data sets, in first example, the variability is very low. Like all students are kind of 48 to 52. All are scoring in the very middle. And in the data too, you can see that the, now the variability is somehow increasing. And similarly in study three, uh, data three, and then in data four. So it is important that we should know something about the uh, you know, spread of scores in the data also. And I will tell you shortly that how and why and where it is so important to know about the uh, variability and dispersion in the data. So in today's lecture, we will cover uh, measures of dispersion or variability. Uh, primarily, there are like four or five measures that have been written in your textbooks, uh, which I have recommended already. Um, so they are range, interquartile range. Uh, we also talk about mean deviation slightly briefly, and then there's variance and standard deviation. So let's start with the range. Range, as we talked about uh, in our previous lecture when we were constructing histogram in Polygon, uh, that we calculate how we make the class intervals and class boundaries by looking at the range. So range you know, is a rough measure, and it gives you rough estimation of spread of scores in the data. It's very simple, it's crude, and very uh, kind of you just take the highest value in the data and take the lowest value in the data. You subtract the lowest value from the highest value to get an idea of what is the range. So it is usually maximum minus minimum. For example, if I have data like um, 42, 43, 44, 45, uh, like the example similar first data set where the mean was 50 and the highest score was 52 and the lowest score was uh, 48, I think. 
um, yes, 48. The range will be 52 minus uh, 48, which is almost 4. And you can see the range in all the data sets in the last data set where we have uh, 0 uh, minus uh, 0 and 100. So if we subtract minimum score from the maximum score, the range will be 99. So it's increasing. Uh, so mostly ranges maximum minus minimum, but you have seen that in some formulas in the book, uh, the formula is maximum minus minimum plus one also. Why? Because when we have a kind of discrete data, or uh, when we have a data uh, inclusive measure, uh, we usually you know include both ends. We include the lowest and the highest score as well. For example, I have given this example here on the slide. I want to see the number of children in a family and the data have one, two, three, four, five. Now there are families who have one kid and there are families who have five kids. So one and five are inclusive. It's a kind of discrete data. So I will tell the range is five and one inclusive, which is five minus one, which is four. And I have to plus one because there are families with one child and there are families with the five children. So in these cases where both the limits are inclusive and you are usually dealing with the kind of whole numbers, discrete data, uh, you will be adding, uh, you know, one uh, highest minus lowest plus one. And this is how we do. What are the advantages and disadvantages of using range? Yes, range is a kind of a quick estimation. If somebody wants to know about the dispersion of scores in the data, for example, if I have you know, taken an exam and somebody asked me the performance of the class, the quick and, you know, uh, rough estimation could be that I can see the highest uh, score in the data and I can see the lowest score in the data and I can see, oh, this is how students are, uh, you know, scoring on this test. So it's a uh, quick and it give you rough estimation about the spread of scores. But of course, there are some cones as well or disadvantages as well. Why? Because it just focuses on the extreme values. Uh, it ignores all the middle values because it just take the maximum value and the minimum value. Uh, like we have uh, talked about earlier also that if I have one, two, three, four and a hundred value in it, then the range will be like hundred minus one. But if I look at the data, actually they all are closely like below five scores. Um, so this is disadvantage because it ignores the, all the data in between and just take the two uh, kind of extreme values, just like we talked about mean that is affected by extreme scores and range is also like that. So to overcome that why um, range is ignoring middle scores, we have another measure which is called interquartile range. Interquartile range also tells you about the spread of the scores, but it focuses on the middle 50% of the cases. How, just like a median, you know, we take the central value, we ignore what is on the ends, what are the extreme values, we just ignore them and we see what is the middle value. Similarly, uh, for looking at the dispersion or variability in the data, we just focus on the middle 50% of the cases. So the formula for uh, calculating interquartile range is uh, you calculate Q3, you calculate Q1, and then you subtract Q3 uh, and minus Q1 to get the interquartile range. Uh, so it gives you variability within middle 50% of the cases and ignores the uh, you know uh, lower and the um, upper end of the data. Um, this is how we calculate. It's just a rough data which is very smooth, symmetrical. Uh, straight numbers just to give you an idea that how we calculate interquartile range it is uh, supposingly I have data 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and 11 so I'll calculate Q3 which is uh, uh, 75th percentile also and it is 8.5 because you can see that here is the you know 75th percentile and here is the Q1 which is 25th percentile so I'll take this value and this value and subtract it and I'll get uh, that the dispersion or the variability within 50% is almost 5. Uh, we can do it on the group data also um, because uh, I will calculate here maybe um, that uh, if we have a group data, you know the formula. Remember how we calculated median 
uh, which was uh, L plus I over F minus जो भी आपने परसेंटाइल निकालना है फॉर एग्जाम्पल अगर Q1 है तो दैट इज़ ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ परसेंटाइल सो आप P और फिर आप उसमें से क्यूमलेटिव फ्रिक्वेंसी जो उसकी प्रोसीडिंग क्लास की है या ब्लो क्लास की है वो माइनस करेंगे टू गेट द परसेंटाइल सो फॉर Q1 वन आई विल कैलकुलेट ट्वेंटी फिफ्थ परसेंटाइल हीयर एंड फॉर Q3 थ्री आई कैलकुलेट सेवेंटी फिफ्थ परसेंटाइल आई कैलकुलेट दोज टू वैल्यूज एंड देन I'll I'll give the interquartile range. Maybe if you want, I can just uh, you know go through a quick example. Let's solve an example here, uh, which will refresh our previous ideas also, which where we did uh, median and we calculated other percentile ranks. I will take a very simple data, so I can uh, quickly you know uh, calculate without calculators. Supposingly, this is the data seven, six, five, uh, four, and three. And group data means I have frequency for everything. So supposingly three, three, four, three, three. This is the frequency I have to calculate column of CF. You know to calculate any percentile or uh, median or quartile, you have to have column of cumulative frequency, uh, which means that you will add. Uh, if it's a descending order, you will start from here, which is three. Three plus four is seven. Seven plus five is uh, um, twelve, and twelve plus sixteen, eighteen, and eighteen plus sorry, it's a uh, three plus three. I'm actually adding x value rather than f value, so I have to add three, and then the upper frequency three plus three is six, then six plus four is ten, then ten plus Three is thirteen, and then thirteen plus three is sixteen. So first of all, I have to calculate. It is uh, Q three minus Q one. I have to calculate what is the Q uh, three, which is a seventy fifth percentile in my data. So it is seventy three divided by hundred out of um, what is the F column total? It is uh, uh, three plus three six plus four ten plus three thirteen plus three sixteen. So here is the uh, I'll just get twenty five three is a seventy five twenty four four is a hundred and then four four is a sixteen which is four into three is twelve and now I'll calculate Q one in my data uh, which is a uh, twenty five divided by a hundred into sixteen uh, so similarly I'll calculate which is Four. So Q one is four, Q three is twelve. Remember, this is a position in the data. This is not the score. Actually, we have to find out that the score lying at the fourth percent uh, position is a Q one, and the score lying at the twelfth position is a Q three. We will plug the values in the formula to calculate the Q three. Uh, it is L plus I over F into परसेंटाइल जो आपने निकाला है माइनस क्यूमलेटिव फ्रीक्वेंसी बिलो वाली और हम निकाल लेंगे पहले क्यू थ्री विच इज़ चूँकि हमारे पास क्लास हमने आइडेंटिफाई करना है पहले क्यू थ्री के लिए कि ट्वेल्व किस क्लास में है बाय लुकिंग एट द क्यूमलेटिव फ्रीक्वेंसी कॉलम सो हमारा ये क्यूमलेटिव फ्रिक्वेंसी कॉलम है और हमारा ट्वेल्व इस क्लास में आएगा तो दिस इज़ कॉल्ड अ मॉडल क्लास फॉर क्यू थ्री तो इसमें से हमने इसका लोअर लिमिट ले लेनी है विच इज़ सिक्स इसको सिक्स ही ले लें हमारे पास डेटा वैसे नहीं है प्लस आई आई का मतलब है क्लास इंटरवल जो कि तीन चार पाँच छः एक का इंटरवल है तो हम वन कर लेंगे और फ्रीक्वेंसी इसी क्लास की जो मॉडल क्लास है विच इज़ थ्री तो वन बाय थ्री और फिर हमारे पास परसेंटाइल हमने क्यू थ्री निकाला है ट्वेल्व दिस वन तो ट्वेल्व माइनस क्यूमलेटिव फ्रिक्वेंसी बिलो विच इज दिस वन सो माइनस टेन Which is equal to ten minus two is two. Two divided by three is kind of uh, um, how much is point something? I got uh, two divided by three six point six uh, um, something point six and something. So it is six point six. आ जाएगा हमारे पास Q three. इसी तरह हम Q one निकाल लेंगे. 
और Q1 के लिए भी हम वैल्यूज पुट इन करेंगे Q1 का हमने निकाला था चार और चार हमारी इस वाली फ्रीक्वेंसी कॉलम में आता है क्यूमिलेटिव फ्रीक्वेंसी कॉलम में तो दिस इज द मॉडल क्लास फॉर Q1 तो हम इसकी लोअर लिमिट ले लेंगे जो कि चार है प्लस हम कर देंगे I ओवर F वन बाई थ्री और फिर हम अब इसकी इसकी क्यूमिले इसकी फ्रीकुनसी तीन ही है मॉडल क्लास की और उसके बाद हम इसका परसेंटाइल हमने जो निकाला है फोर निकाला है Q1 के लिए फोर प्लग इन करेंगे और माइनस क्यूमिलेटिव फ्रीक्वेंसी बिलो विच इज़ दिस वन फोर माइनस थ्री इसको जब हम सॉल्व करेंगे फोर माइनस थ्री इज़ वन वन डिवाइडेड बाई थ्री इज पॉइंट थ्री तो फोर प्लस पॉइंट थ्री इज समथिंग लाइक फोर पॉइंट थ्री आ जाएगा तो अब आप वैल्यूज पुट इन करेंगे लेट सपोज सिक्स एंड फोर इसको राउंड कर दें सिक्स पॉइंट सिक्स माइनस फोर पॉइंट थ्री विच इज ऑलमोस्ट रफली टू तो हमारी इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज विच इज क्यू थ्री माइनस क्यू वन हमने निकाली है वो हमारी ये निकली है आंसर इंटर क्वार्टाइल रेंज सो दिस इज हाउ द मिडल इट गिव्स यू द इंफॉर्मेशन अबाउट द मिडल फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द केसेज के आपके मिडल फिफ्टी परसेंट केसेज में आपका स्प्रेड ऑफ स्कोर क्या है सो दिस इज हाउ वी कैलकुलेट इंटर क्वार्टल रेंज हैज देर ओन डिसएडवाटेजेज एंड एडवाटेजेज बिकॉज एज वी टॉक दैट द लिमिटेशन ऑफ यूजिंग रेंज वॉज दैट इट वॉज इग्नोरिंग द मिडल डेटा एंड जस्ट फोकसिंग ऑन द टू एक्सट्रीम वैल्यूज सो टू आंसर दैट क्वेरी वी हैव अ इंटर क्वार्टल रेंज जिसमें हम मिडल फिफ्टी परसेंट केसेज पे फोकस करते हैं तो इसका फ़ायदा ये है कि आप चूँकि ज़्यादा स्कोर हमारे मिडल में कंसनट्रेटेड होते हैं आपको मिडल के केसेस के बारे में वेरेबिलिटी बताता है इट्स ईजी टू कैलकुलेट क्योंकि यूजली आप अगर डेटा स्मूथ है तो आप खुद भी आइडेंटिफाई कर सकते हैं कि ये आपका Q3, Q1 क्यू वन जैसा हमने पीछे अनग्रुप डेटा के अंदर आइडेंटिफाई किए स्कोर्स और एलिमिनेट्स इन्फ्लुंस ऑफ एक्सट्रीम स्कोर्स जैसा हमने बात की थी कि रेंज का जो है कि उसके एक्सट्रीम स्कोर्स सिर्फ कंसिडर करता है लेकिन इसका ड्रॉबैक ये है कि आपकी बहुत सी इन्फॉर्मेशन ये मिस कर देता है एक्सट्रीम वैल्यूज़ क्या हैं बॉटम एंड टॉप ट्वेंटी फाइव परसेंट केसेज को इग्नोर करता है एंड स्टिल वी रियली वॉन्ट टू नो वेरीबिलिटी इन द होल डेटा दैट हाउ द स्कोर्स आर स्प्रेड आउट विदाउट लुकिंग एट द एक्सट्रीम वैल्यूज और विदाउट लुकिंग एट द मिडल फिफ्टी परसेंट ऑफ द केसेज सो वी हैव अ मेन डिविएशन ऑल्सो मेन डिविएशन कहते हैं कि जी हर स्कोर एक्स स्कोर्स के मेन से माइनस करें वी यू नो टेक इन टू अकाउंट ईच एक्स वैल्यू एंड सी हाउ इट इज यू नो डिविएटिंग और डिस्टेंसिंग और वेरेबिलिटी हर एक स्कोर की मीन से कितनी है सो वी टेक ईच वैल्यू सब्ट्रैक्ट फ्राम द मीन एंड देन वी एट द टोटल लेकिन प्रॉब्लम यह है कि जब भी आप एक डेटा के अंदर हर स्कोर को उसी के मीन से माइनस करेंगे तो वो समेशन हमेशा जीरो आएगा जैसे मैंने यहाँ पर एक एग्जाम्पल दिया हुआ है जब भी क्योंकि मीन आपका सेंट्रल पॉइंट है आपकी बेसिकली बैलेंसिंग पॉइंट है तो जब आप डेटा के हर स्कोर में से उसका सेंटर माइनस करेंगे तो वो फिर ज़ीरो हो जाएगा एज अ हिव शोन इन दिस एग्जाम्पल सो दिस इज़ नॉट वेरी मच यूज तो हम अगले में बात करेंगे कि वाट आर द बेस्ट मेयर्स फॉर यू नो नोइंग अबाउट द वेरेबिलिटी इन द डेटा एंड डिस्पर्शन इन द डेटा